Hey everybody, I would have said that it is without a doubt that magnets are a great big ugly mystery. Of course, the minute you say something, somebody's going to go, no, they're not, they're not mysterious to me. But mostly, we haven't got a clue how they actually work. I mean, we have some random guesses about it. When the ancients knew about magnets, it was lodestone, uh, iron three oxide, it's naturally magnetic. And they did things like party tricks and made compasses out of them. And it wasn't until about 1816 when Erst had performed his famous experiment experiment demonstrating there was a link between electric current and magnetism and we believe that it has something to do with electrons and the orientation of those electrons in a domain. Now everything exhibits magnetism but magnetism has different forms. The one we're used to, that bulk magnetism that causes the mysterious attraction and repulsion of two lumps of material is ferromagnetism. You find that in things like iron, nickel, cobalt, samarium, neon, dimium iron oxide but there's another kind of magnetism called paramagnetism which is a weakly attracting force and then there's diamagnetism which is a, a thing that you find in things like copper and particularly carbon where you apply a magnetic field and you set up a magnetic field in opposition and so you can get a lump of carbon to float or a lump of bismuth to float on very strong magnets another great party trick but by and large, people don't really understand magnetism. And that's fair enough, because understanding it is not a prerequisite to doing something with it. And of course, we've been doing stuff with magnets since Ersted was playing around in his lab. Primarily, of course, things like speakers and generation, but a whole new thing has come up in the 1940s using magnets for gearing, because magnets for gearing have a whole range of pretty obvious advantages to them. Main ones being, well, they don't act on each other, so you can keep them separate, meaning you can uh, make, create a magnetic coupling. And those very first magnetic couplings and sort of magnetic gears, which are called first order gears, we're pretty simple utilizing just that attraction and repulsion and work pretty much in the same way of spur gears because we're an inventive lot, aren't we? And there's nothing stopping us playing with something, and so we did. And we developed something called the second order gear. The second order magnetic gear uses um, two rings of magnets with a magnetic material, a ferromagnetic material in between them to create what's called a flux modulator. Now that kind of gear doesn't operate in the same way as a spur gear. It's much more akin to a strain wave gear. Strain wave gears were invented in 1957 uh, and they are, um, they are essentially a flexible spline that engages with a non-flexible gear and there's a, an ellipse in the center and as it rotates it creates a traveling wave which engages with the gear and creates a very compact package with a high gear ratio. Magnetic gears of the second order are much more related to that. And they are stunningly easy to make. Here's my effort in Tink account, and of course the link is in the description, and these files are public, and you can see that it's basically made of three concentric circles. The inner circle and the outer circle take magnets, and the middle circle, which is the modulator, just takes some lump of iron. So there's my inner and outer ring printer off. Now this has got 12 magnets in it, and they're arranged north, south, north, south, north, south, so there's six pole pairs in there. It's got four magnets in it, again, north, south, north, south, so two pole pairs. So if we add those together, we've got eight pole pairs in the inner and the outer, which means in the center one, and these are just M8 nuts stuffed in these slots, there's eight of them. So the number of slots is equal to the pole pairs of the two added up, and the gear ratio is the ratio of the pole pairs. We put a bearing in the center there, so the lump of steel goes in the center like that, and then this one goes in the center like that. So that is the gear arrangement. So we can see it, then I've got a couple of handles here that we can put on there. Put one there, and one there. And if we turn this handle, then we'll get that gear ratio. Now we've got two pole pairs there, six pole pairs there, so the gear ratio is three to one. So if I turn that, then that's turning three times quicker than that. So there are stunningly easy things to make. This particular arrangement is, um, well, it, it's the popular arrangement you see all over the place. And you often see them where each segment can be held still. So we're holding the outer segment still, and the gear ratio that we're getting is between the 
middle segment and the inner segment, but we can equally hold any of those segments still and turn the other segments, in which case we'll get the other gear ratios. If I turn that one, then obviously this is a third slower than this one. <laughs> one of the joys of this is they're actually really stunningly easy to make for a very good gear ratio. I mean, I 3D printed this, but you could equally glue them on. You certainly don't have to machine gears to high tolerances, so you can make a compact gearbox relatively easily that performs quite well in a home workshop. That's got to be a huge advantage of something like this. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe. It, it, it is mesmerizing.